Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson of Breakthrough Growth. Today we're going to talk about market leadership position. Why is it your best bet to scale and how to make it happen? So remember, we always start with the technology adoption life cycle. So the positioning messages change as the market matures. So positioning needs to be dynamic. So at the beginning of the market, the innovators, the, the very first ones adopting our technology, they are specialists, and, but they are skeptical on our technology. Then the early adopters, the next wave of adoption, they are specialists too, but they are supportive on our technology. That's the reason because there is so uh, much excitement in the market at the, at the very beginning, because early adopters, they are excited about our product. So we need product messages and talking about performance and features in our product to convince them. But what happened when we want to scale? Remember, it's full scale, we achieve it, crossing to the mainstream and penetrating the mainstream. Now, it turns out that the early majority is skeptical about us. They're skeptical. So we switch from supportive people in the early adopters or supportive businesses like the early adopters to uh, a skeptical early majority. So now we need market messages to convince them because market messages supposedly are not biased by us, by our communications. They just think that your company communications are biased by you. So they don't trust you, right? So we need to build trust. and We build trust with market messages. Then we, we're going to see what does that mean. And then if we go to the early uh, to the lay majority, the lay majority they care about company messages. So as a summary, the basis of differentiation shifts dramatically as market develops. Early markets they care about technology and product. Mainstream markets uh, they care about market and company. So people who are supportive of your value proposition, like the early majority, like the early adopters take an interest in your products and in your company. People who are skeptical of what you do, they don't support. So this means that at the beginning of the early majority, when skepticism is the common state, basing communications on product or company strengths is a mistake. So what you should use instead? So to achieve scale, here is how we need to dynamically change and switch our messaging we need these market messages we need to talk about our customer base we need to have reviews cases demonstrate results talk about our install base talk if, if we are the de facto standard demonstrate it talk about market share demonstrate growth uh, third-party support that we have with another companies partnership alliances distribution channels that we have now What's the strongest market that we can send out there for the skeptical, um, for the skeptical adopter? And what's the lowest risk perception that we can have in the market? So the answer is easy: market leadership. Market leadership positioning is the strongest market message we can send out there, and that's the reason because market leadership is so difficult to defeat, and it's the best mode we can have, and and that's how you build brand when somebody talks about uh, build a brand mode. That means uh, most, most of the times you're going to build a market leadership positioning and with market leadership positioning uh, and with marketing tactics, it would come um, a brand mode. How to achieve it? So the formula of market leadership is this is segmentation plus differentiation. So now the question to answer is which segment gives you the opportunity to become the market leader. And here's the trick. The market boundaries are elastic. You can define a segment by a group of people who want something or achieve another thing within a market category. But then you can play with that segment definition and boundaries until you find a winning niche that helps you develop a market leadership position. So find your market's boundaries, define your own niche, and then test combinations of offer plus niche to find the winning niche. Like ConvertKit. So ConvertKit is the marketing platform leader for creators. They claim that and they can because they have almost half a million of creators 
working with their platform. They don't fight with HubSpot, MailChimp, Arctic Campaign. They just won this segment and are the top first option for creators. And that's going to be real difficult to defeat. So they have a sustaining advantage. Now, here is the positioning canvas I want to show you to start working on, on this market leadership positioning and, and your messaging. This positioning canvas is based in April Dunford. It's, she's the top one expert in positioning for high-tech businesses. So I highly recommend you read um, at the book, Obviously Awesome. Uh, I took this from the book and uh, I did some tweaks that work best for me. So first of all, in your positioning canvas, you're going to put your value, your one line value proposition, one line compelling description of what your product is and the tips for your target market. Then the market category and subcategory, if you have one, what mental box would people use to get your product quickly? Remember that mental box. Then the segment, that segment that can help you achieve market leadership that segment that is really ready to buy you, they have budget, and a segment who cares a lot about what you have. Then we're going to list a list of uh, unique attributes. What features and intangibles does your whole offering have that alternatives do not? And remember the lesson two, here is where it fits with the low risk recipe and with the whole product offering. Okay, we're going to talk with an example about this. Uh, and then the outcomes results, what valuable impact do those attributes enable for customers? And of course, the competitive alternatives of the attributes. So now the positioning canvas and the low risk recipe you're offering that remember the lesson two, here is how it fits. By now to achieve full scale, positioning is dynamic. We need more messages about market. We need more messages about reduce adoption costs, reduce risk perception. We need less messages about core benefits. So at the beginning, when you are launching your new technology or product here, you will list a lot of core features and technology stuff that will differentiate you from the competitors. But to achieve full scale and to accelerate the time to scale, we're going to focus more on end user harmony attributes or market category cooperation attributes and safety in numbers attributes. If you don't remember these attributes, go back to the lesson two. They are all listed there. I, I explained it to you. Why? Because those attributes are the ones that are going to reduce the adoption cost perception for our potential customer and are going to reduce the risk perception for our potential customer. And that's what matters for mainstream, as we've been saying. Now, an example, I think Stripe is the best example I can give you because they have the kind of perfect dynamic positioning out there. Uh, Stripe in 2014, they were focused on product messages. Um, they were focused on, on, on convincing early adopters so when you go to, to the page in 2014, you were able to see all about product messages and core features, how the checkout works, simply uh, the, the features they have, how does it integrates with another platforms and all of that. If, if we go to 2017, they started to focus on market messaging. They were claiming to be the new standard in online payments. And that's a strong market message because that is kind of being the, if you're the standard, you're the leader. Then you have to demonstrate it. And, and then you have to show numbers, reviews, cases, all of that. But that's the kind of message that you want to have. So as the market evolves, you want to penetrate in the mainstream. That's the kind of market message you want to have. Now that the category, the market category of payment platforms is very into the mainstream, depending on the geography, they need, um, remember, company messages too, but they're still focusing mostly on market messages to convince 
and penetrate the mainstream in those geographies that are still skeptical about this kind of payment infrastructure. So the very first message is the payments infrastructure for the internet. Okay, here's um, the new standard. Is is the standard right? They claim like to be uh, the category itself, right? So if the category is payments infrastructure for the internet, they say they are that. It's like being the the standard. If you keep reading, millions of companies of all sizes use Stripe software and APIs to accept payments, send payouts, and all of that. So that's mar strong market message, millions of companies. So that's claiming the market leadership positioning, the, m the strongest market message yet you can have. Then we keep reading right now in the web page, more market messages with the big companies that they are working with, and then product messages, a fully integrated suite of payments products. But that's... Um, uh, anyway, that's part of the whole product. Remember that when you have more than one product in the same market category, that reduces the low risk uh, perception of your product. So it's a product message, but still is part of the whole product. And it's a way to differentiate yourself too. And then they still have the technology messages, like the world's most powerful and easy to use API. If we keep scrolling, we keep seeing market and company messages talking about the numbers, the transactions they do, the penetration rate of Stripe and all of that. So it's the perfect example of how positioning should be dynamic on what you have to focus to accelerate the scale and conquer the mainstream. Now, here I'm leaving for you the positioning checklist so that you know if your positioning is effective or is not effective, um, but I'm not going to read it because I'm not adding any value, just reading it. You can uh, have a look at it. Now, what can you do today to accelerate your time to scale? So by now you should have plenty of interviews already in, pl in place, right? You, you, I've asked you to do plenty of interviews during, during this, uh, the last lessons. So find what is the segment that can help you claim a market leadership position. Their needs should fit with your offering. Your value proposition is the same, the same of the same and positioning. Now use the differentiation sources slide and the low risk recipe. Remember the lesson two to build a strong offer for that segment. Focus all your resources that strong I would say, uh, advice, focus all your resources on winning that segment so that you can claim and communicate a market leadership position as soon as, as possible. Because the sooner you have market leadership positioning in that segment, then you can evaluate adjacent segments and diversify those resources to penetrate adjacent segments, claiming that you already have a market leadership positioning in an adjacent segment. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you find it helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson of Breakthrough Growth. Thank you.